Hi, guys. Welcome to Music Matters, a podcast series about all things music. And today I have an awesome guest, um, somebody who I've admired for many years as a bass player and as a musician, as a guy, as a human. <laughs> um, Mr. Rudy Sarzo, how you doing, Rudy? I'm doing fantastic. Blessed beyond words. Awesome. That's the best yeah. way to be, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> so what have, you, what have you been up to? I mean, I, obviously, it's been a kind of a crazy year. It's always crazy. I can't remember what what is never been crazy. <laughs> yeah, you know? that's true too. You know, it, it's just it's just new levels of craziness and different levels of craziness. Right. Sure. Know? But uh, yeah, it's 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 always it's always uh, challenging. It's always rewarding. It's always I don't know. You know, it's 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 the human experience. And right. We yeah. might as well enjoy it while we're here. Yeah, we kind of know when we sign up for this crazy music life that it's going to be a little wacky. <laughs> oh, that well, that's that's something else. I mean, yeah. well, I'm just talking about just the, the just human life. experience. You right. know, when we were like when we were the sperm that beat other millions of sperms to getting the egg, <laughs> we made that decision. You right, know, we exactly. We really wanted to get here. Yeah. And now that we're here, you know. Let's, Let's rock and roll. Level. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, rock it. So you're yeah. um you, you live in L.A. now, right? Yes, I've been here since uh, the mid '70s. Yeah. Okay, and have you kind of gone back and forth, or were you always sort of based out of LA once you got established? Yeah, I, I, uh, I loved LA. LA was my, uh, my, one of my main eggs. Right. Because I, through my life, I, you know, it's just like we all do. I mean, we, at some point in our lives, we all have to like getting get back to that sperm mode that got us here <laughs> right you know just to achieve certain things in our in our uh journey yeah you know and uh la was definitely would you know as a matter of fact you know people ask me where was i born i mean i was born physically in havana cuba right but i was really born as the person that i am today here in yeah. los angeles right no, I this is, yeah so it's kind of hard for me to you know i've already left one place that i was born at physically yeah. cuba and to keep moving around you know you have to get to the point that it's like you can't get away from certain things anymore of course when my family left cuba it was because of communism right you know political reasons we were Cuban refugees you know so we didn't have much of a choice you can't really fight you know, and expect to win, to have a good outcome, something like communism, right? You know, it's, it's, it's a whole thing that either usually it implodes, you know, as a, as a society in certain mm -hmm. countries, certain countries, for whatever reason, they still maintain that, but you know, right. nevertheless, but, you know, living in LA has incredible challenges and it's been challenging for many reasons, you know, uh, as you used to live here, I'm pretty sure yeah. you, you know, and, and for many years, even during the 90s, I, I tried to leave L.A. once the music industry started to to evaporate out of sure. Los Angeles. I, uh, I, you know, we lived for a while in uh, uh, Indian Wells outside of Palm Springs. Right. That's uh, a fun, actually, that's a fun area. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but it wasn't that much fun back in 1990 when yeah, we first you're, and you're moved kind of, there. You're kind of isolated, right? Yeah, you know, isolated. And, and uh, actually, the lifestyle that we lead now was perfect back then. But, oh, but okay. back then, we were like, you know, what, uh, 30 years ago? Yeah. You know, we, we weren't ready for that. And uh, and also, we moved to Florida. I wanted to get into the, uh, the Latin uh, music industry, television industry, and oh. so on. Right, and, which, but, is, which but, is huge. Yeah, it's huge, but then again, it has its own. Yeah, it's its <laughs> own know? unique world. Yeah, it's a very <laughs> unique world. Yeah, and uh, but my wife uh, was born here in the LA area, and uh, she's a native, and uh, you know she feels very much at home, and so and so do I. Like I mentioned, I, I feel reborn here in, in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. So it's you know. We deal with certain challenges of living in LA, but uh, but we but we love it, and we live in an area that is kind of like we live in Woodland Hills, right? Yeah, Topanga, yeah, it's a great area, sure. Topanga, you know, area, and uh, so it's I stay away from going into the places 
or the neighborhoods that I used to live. Yeah. You know, like yeah, it's more. challenging. Like I love LA, but it's changed yeah. a lot. And I, I mean, I grew up there in the sort of seventies mm -hmm. and eighties, you know, mm -hmm. and I did the whole, like, you know, Gazaris, the rock and roll whiskey, all those places, yeah. and, which was so much. I mean, there were so many great bands. That's when guns and roses and all those guys were getting signed. Um, how, how did you, when you, you, you're, I know you, obviously you came from, from Havana and then your, was your family musicians or how did that happen? No, for you? no, no. My, my brother and I got into music basically just like every other kid that got into music back in the sixties with the Beatles. And, you know, right. some of us kept doing it and some of us stopped doing it for a living. And, but, but we're still fans, you know I mean? You know, I've been a fan of music longer than I've been a professional musician, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I think I think sort of we all started that way. My mine was sort of yeah. Kiss back in the day when I was, you know, yeah. <laughs> late yeah. '70s and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so your br brother Robert, what does he play? Is he a guitar player? Or? He's a guitar player. Yeah, oh, yeah. Awesome. He had a band called Hurricane in the '80s. Yeah. Ah, cool. Awesome. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I, 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 he still does. He still has a version of the band, and they tour, you know, whenever possible. <laughs> yeah, they're still playing. Um, so yeah. you, um, I, being in the set in the. Uh, out in LA, that's actually when you first met Kevin Dubrow back in the day, right? Yeah, I met him at the Starwood in one of my visits because I, in, in the mid 70s, I got here in 75, first okay. time. And it was like, uh, you know, we came here and I just said, okay, this is a pretty expensive place. And there was not much of a top 40 scene yeah, in LA. All, yeah. Yeah, it was all original, you know, yep. bands that were trying, you know. The Troubadour and, uh, and all those places, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so I, I knew how to make a living out of being a top 40 musician because that's what I did for 10 years at least prior yeah. to to coming to L.A. So uh, the guys that I came to L.A. with, we decided, you know what, let's, let's not put the band together here. Let's put it together in the Midwest and start playing the Midwest top 40 circuit. Yeah, which at the and, time was hopping, right? Very oh, yeah. Busy. yeah. yeah. Yeah, we base ourselves right outside of Chicago, but mainly we we're playing Chicago area right. uh, clubs. Yeah, you know, and then we felt like, okay, now we got we got some money, we got a foundation. Let's go back to LA, and we went back to LA, and then I we didn't get the record deal that we were hoping for. We I run out of money, then I I, wait, I left again. But meanwhile, during one 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 of those two trips, that's when I met. Kevin, after watching uh, Quiet Riot perform at the Starwood, yeah, and I met him, and basically I just bumped into him when he got off the stage. He was just walking around, and I bumped into him, and I felt compelled just to tell him how great I thought that the band was, and that they were doing going in the right direction. And you know, I just sometimes you do things like that for 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 yourself, yeah. Uh, it's kind and of there's, like some, the and there's reasons why there's sort of reasons why people meet too, right? We realize later, like, oh, that was actually a sort of a seminal moment. I mean, yeah, yeah. I actually met Frankie Benelli exactly the same way on my birthday, 1972, after watching his band play the night before at one of the local big venues, which was Pirates World out in uh, in uh, Hollywood, Florida. Hmm. Out of, yeah. And uh, Bo Bowie played, and his band opened up, and I thought he uh, Frankie stole the show. Yeah. So I was actually I was actually complimenting him at the club the following day. Ah, cool. His playing, thinking that he was he was the bass player in the band. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> and, then, and then he introduced He's like, himself. Hey. And, yeah, yeah. Funny. And uh, yeah, that that started a uh, forty-eight year. Uh, relationship you know? yeah and he i mean like he you know people don't realize how many tracks he's actually recorded on besides the bands mm -hmm. he's been in he was actually a pretty yeah. prolific studio guy too i mean just a, yeah you know. yeah and some of my favorite of playing that he did was either on the Hughes Thrall record and also wasp wasp yeah. just yeah. just so it showed a whole different it showed him showed the world the side of frankie that i saw back in 1972 right. more of a very, uh, I don't know, you know, more Keith Moon rather than John Bonham. <laughs> yeah, like a, like a, just a real animal rocking out. Yeah, and that's, yeah, I mean, exactly. Wasp, Wasp is yeah. such a fun band to begin with. Just, yeah. I mean, you know, um, yeah. yeah, so Frankie, I mean, we're going to get, I know it's the situation with him is kind of sad mm -hmm. recently, but um, so the Quiet Riot thing with, with Kevin and all that, um, I know you kind of joined and rejoined, but you actually, um, when you, 
guys hit with mental health when you came in at that point i mean that rock that album was just rocking and that's when i really first like when i saw you guys on the us festival that video is still amazing <laughs> you know yeah uh well my my journey with choir Rye was it started back in 78 when i joined the band with randy rhodes then randy went off right. to join ozzy in 79 and but there was a version of it, not officially named Quiet Riot, because it was not Quiet Riot. You yeah. know, it was actually Dubrow. Right. And yeah. and I and I played on and off in Dubrow right be, until I joined Ozzy. Oh, okay. So so what happened was, and this just basically to focus on on the connect the the yeah, missing link yeah. between. <laughs> The the Randy Rose Quiet Riot, the right? Two Bro, and then yeah. you have the Metal Health version. Because you were very busy in that in that in that time frame, and the, yeah. Well, I was doing different things, but yeah. But during that between Quiet Riot and me joining Ozzy, I played in Dubro. Kevin put his the the band and actually named it, named the Dubro so he could have like a revolving door. Sure. Of people coming in and out, you know, so it wasn't like, oh, somebody's not showing up to play yeah, guitar. It's not today. the same well, band, yeah. Exactly. Not, yeah, exactly. So it was the name Dubrow, right? And uh, so I, I would say most of the songs on Metal Health, at least half the record, were songs that came from the Dubrow era. Oh, okay. You know, which which makes sense because that's exactly what du Kevin was doing right before making Metal Health. Right. Writing, writing yeah. those songs. There, there's one that's a carryover from the uh, Quiet Riot days, which is um, with Randy, which is Slave by Cadillac. Yeah. That was the only song. And Kevin, Kevin wrote that himself with, with, without Randy. And then you have, uh, you know, like uh, Love's a Bitch and, you know, Thunderbird. These are songs that actually I was the, the, the first bass player to play those songs. Uh, okay. and, then I, and, th and then I left to join Ozzy and then other right. bass players play, play the song. And then when it came time for me to go in at, for the request of Kevin to play on one track, he called me up and said, listen, would you, you know, can you, would you, would you like to come in and record on Thunderbird? Right. When that this was the tribute after, track. Randy, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. After, after Randy had passed away. Yeah. Tribute which, to Randy. Uh, which, uh, yeah. Which, which the song originally was written as a tribute to Randy for leaving Choir Riot. Oh, uh, Okay. You know, interesting. Kind of like uh, Dolly Parton's "I Will Always Love You." Right. Yep. As yeah. A, as With Porter Wagner, yeah. <laughs> to Porter Wagner. Yeah. Gotcha. Kind of like basically the same thing. Yeah. Okay. And uh, gotcha. so uh, after after uh, Randy passed away, the song had a different meaning, and I believe he rewrote. He he might have rewritten the uh, the last verse. I'm not. I'm not. I have to compare notes, and of course, I don't have a copy of the original verse yeah, of the okay. song. Yeah, you know, I got but, you. But but anyways, it was it was meant as a tribute to Randy. And what happened was, since I knew, since I already had played the song, I was familiar with the song. So we basically cut the track in a couple of takes. Right. Right. Okay. So there's like three hours left in the session. So the they start going, you know, between Spencer, the producer, and and the guys in the band. They go so. Uh, do you remember Slick Black Cadillac? And I go, yeah, it's been a while, but you know, yeah, you know, let's let's go over it, right? So we cut it, you know. And then, how about let's get crazy? Oh yeah, okay, I think I remember that one. You know, so it's kind of right. like by the well, time it's actually, that I left it felt this, very very natural because you'd already played the songs for for so yeah, long. Yeah, exactly, right? exactly. So, so you know, it, it, the, uh, when I went in to do that session, there was a lot of uh, for me playing with Ozzy, it was never the same after Randy passed away. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that was, and I mean, the Ozzy, um, the Ozzy years. I mean, obviously Randy. Well, that with you, Randy and and Tommy, such a great band, a tight band. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And also the personality thing is is big, right? In that situation, because it's a small oh, yeah. group and it's hitting mm -hmm. hard, and and Ozzy's doing his thing, and um, mm -hmm. so when you, when the when the Quiet Riot thing came back around. You were sort of ready for a change. Is that is that true? Well, it, it was that, that I just lost the joy of making music yeah. after uh, after Randy died because right. here I am in a situation that I'm going back on stage and it's not the same. It's not even close. Right. Yeah. It's not just about not being the same. It's like 
Yeah, and you guys and you guys were a close band too, and, and friends. Yeah. So yeah, and, and it wasn't just the sound; it's the energy. You know how like certain individuals, like like if you find certain bands that people become for whatever reason irreplaceable, right. it's because they're all their frequency. They're like pistons, you know. Yeah, it's firing. their en- their energy, not just their playing. Their right? energy. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a frequency that. Yep. That when you make music, it's like this. It becomes the 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 total, the mass. Right, it becomes bigger than just the parts. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And when when Randy was gone, is that frequently we just lower our frequency completely. Yeah, low, low. It's just like woof, it was like a black hole, basically. Right. Yeah, you I know, can understand. Sucked that. everything out of us uh, spiritually. Everything, everything, energy wise. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, being in the room with Kevin recording and Frankie, who yeah. had or been playing with him on and off for 10 years, uh, right. Carlos, who I knew from, from the scene, it just, it, it gave me a, an emotional refuge. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's like people that you're comfortable with already, right? It's not yeah. like starting over. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and to, to leave Ozzy, you know, yeah, that was the hardest thing I, I had ever done at that time. Right. Because I'm, I'm leaving one of the biggest bands in the world for for the total uncertainty. That yeah, was... because at that point, Quiet Riot hadn't really been hitting big. It was just in the the reformation stages, right? Well, like... Yeah, and in addition to that, no, in the United States, nobody of that genre had hit it big. Right. We were basically, as far as as far as the LA music scene goes, we we were all dinosaurs. Yeah. That's the type of music that's not happening. Meanwhile. This is British new wave of metal coming. Yeah. And this is also yeah. MTV, MTV era hitting hard and that, all that's going on yeah. too, right? Yeah, but MTV wasn't really, uh, as a matter of fact, when we did the Speak of the Devil, which is basically the Diary of a Madman tour right. uh, concert for MTV Halloween night, 1982, uh, MTV was just a baby, baby yeah. station, you know? Yeah. And uh, so, you know, you were not going to put your career, your hope and faith on this yeah. little baby station that you just did. Yeah, it's still, they're just still getting on the radar at that point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it did have a huge effect on bands like Quiet Riot and the Motley Crew and Rad and Twisted yeah. Sister and, and so on. You know, because we, there was such little content that right. our videos, let's say. Yeah, they were on heavy, noise, heavy rotation, right? Yeah. Every half hour. Yeah. You know, when they were actually playing videos, you know, yeah. and <laughs> exactly. uh, yeah, so uh, so getting getting back to to the subject of uh, of the of the metal health choir riot and then Dubrow, right. you know, the, it, Kevin, on the last visit that that Randy did, you know, coming back on a break from Ozzy, yeah. you know, we uh, we all got together and Kevin asked Randy and me for our blessings to rename at some point, the band that Dubrow renamed it Choir Riot. Yeah. And of course, you know, Randy gave his blessings and so so did I, you know. Right. So so it was not out of, out of respect. It was actually permitted yeah. by Randy, you know, yeah. to rename. That, I mean, at that point too, I'm sure you guys, are, you guys are wishing Kevin well anyways. And of course, yeah. of course, of, of course we were, but, uh, so the band did not get renamed Choir Riot until we signed, or you know, the four of us signed the record deal, and we did the first show March, I believe March 18th or 19th that weekend of 1983. Uh, we we did two shows two nights at the Roxy. Oh, okay. In uh, in uh, right. you know where? Yeah. <laughs> the oh, yeah. Sunset Strip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I mean that that. Um... I think the thing too with Quiet Riot is that band, just like Ozzy's band, you guys were all great players. It was all, I mean, solid. And and when that record started hitting, I mean, that's how how many, it's multi-platinum by now, probably, right? I mean, it's still selling, I think. Well, it was, <laughs> it was, health. Multi, it was multi-platinum before I left the band in 1985. So like, Yeah, it's, right. Yeah, it just keeps yeah. on going. Yeah, um, it's actually a global, it's a diamond. Yeah. So when you left, um, when you left the band um, in '85, what was your next uh, your next move? Well, my next move was to put it to put a a new band together, and we have different versions of of that band, but we it never got signed to a major label or anything. 
we made a record with Tony McAlpine, and that would be Tony, yeah. uh, Tommy Aldrich, uh, Tony McAlpine, and Rob Rock yeah. in a band called. Uh, Tony's such an awesome uh, player. Yeah, she's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Project Driver, but it was released by uh, Mike Varney. Ah, yeah, Mike. Yeah, we run into Mike here. Yeah. Actually, I used to yeah. run into to Kevin to uh, Debro yeah. when he was living yeah. in Vegas. Um, yeah. Yeah, Mike Varney is an interesting guy because you know he is actually responsible, or at least partially responsible, for a lot of careers. I mean, oh, it's, absolutely. Amazing. it's amazing. He's he's sort of a guy behind the scenes mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. just discovered some amazing amazing yeah. folks along the way. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, um, you also, I mean, you've been in so many great bands. Um, what's, what's career highlights for you? Like when you, for, when you think of like some of my funnest bands or moments, what, what, what comes to mind first? Oh my God. There's so many. I yeah, mean, I'm as sure far as, as, let's say, as far as Ozzy, I actually wrote a book called uh, off the rails. Right. Yeah. Talking about the, your experience, uh, right? Yeah. The, uh, the, uh, number one question I get asked when I travel around the world is, uh, what was it like to play with Randy Rhodes, you know? Yeah. And I always walked away from being in the lobby on my way to sound check or at a meet and greet of an in-store or whatever, just, you know, telling one or two stories. And that was never enough. So I say, you know what, let me just write a book and tell everything that I know about Randy, you know, as far as my experience, you know, playing with him, which is right. the question that they want to know and really give it, the depth and attention and detail that it really deserves. Yeah, I mean, because there's with Randy, there's so much known about his playing, but mm -hmm. a lot of people don't, I mean, of course, they don't know him personally, but they don't know the person. People see musicians, especially famous ones, they see them as a bass player, a guitar player, but actually they're also a human, right? They have, you know, their personalities, they have things that they like, things that they like to hang out with when they're not doing music. Um, I think it's important, I think doing books like that and explaining those kinds of things are so important, right? Because you guys were so close. Yeah, before, you know, it just so happens that, that uh, I'm a big fan of music and I've read a lot of biographies and autobiographies and so on. And uh, there were a couple that really stood out because of like John Densmore's uh, Writer on the Storm. Right. Bill Wyman's book. Yeah. Uh, they stood out because what what that book, those reading those books gave me was really a like let's say John Desmores about the doors. Well, it was actually about Jim Morrison. Right. He wrote the book for Jim. Yeah. Right. Uh Bill Wyman is a little bit different because it was more kind of like detailing things of how and why things happen and so right. on, which is which is also part of yeah, that's, the there's, it's that valid too. Book. Right. Yeah. But it wasn't really written for a particular person. Yeah. And I think that the best book, the best stories you can tell are actually the stories of, 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 the, of the heroes in your life. Mm -hmm. That way, once you acknowledge you have heroes in your life, eventually, hopefully, you will become the hero in your own life's story. journey. Right. Your own you know. story. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's, it's good to know that, like I kind of what I mentioned, like, you know, even though you may be famous or whatever, but you still have, you're more than that. You're more than just a bass player. You're more than just the guy that played with Ozzy. Like there's a lot, there's a lot to you. I know you do a lot of other things besides just music. Um, and it's great to, to be able to, to read those kinds of books and get that kind of information beyond just the normal, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, unfortunately that, that, uh, that reality gets lost in social media. Yeah, because I enjoy social media for the intimacy, but sometimes it's pretty hard to be intimate when people don't treat you the same as they treat themselves. Right, as a, you know, a three-dimensional human being that has, uh, or the fact that we're we're all the same. Right, we're all the same. You know, treat me the same same way as you would treat your buddy down down the street. Right. Don't try to treat me as something above that because I am not. Yeah, I think that's. I mean, that's something I've always liked about you. And whenever I mean, we we did a base group uh, a Zoom meeting before with the multiple base guys, and and something that I've always liked about you is you seem very approachable and that you that you like you embrace that which I think is important. I think if the guys that there's some people that we all know that, that sort of want to be approached as a rock star. And I think that it seems like that could be a very lonely life, you know? 
I see people like that as being afraid of actually revealing who they really are and they might not really like themselves too much. Yeah, I, maybe that's true. I, I make a living out of connecting. Yep. Connecting. I, I, when, when I was very young and I came to the United States, I was, like, uh, I was about to turn 11 years old. And once we were relocated to New Jersey, I learned very quickly. I must have been just about to turn 13. Uh, I learned, I learned how to be able to communicate through music mm -hmm. right after the, you know, I, I came to, uh, we left Miami in 63, right after that Kennedy got shot. Right. And then the Beatles happened in 64. Yeah. And, so and, much and happening. And yeah. So much happening. And, and I had the major difficulties because of my language barrier. Right. Being able to, to communicate and relate or, or people have me accept it as yeah. like, who's as one this of the freak? guys. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Or, or, you know, I, I wanted to be friends not just with the guys, but with the girls too, you know, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm, sure. I'm 13. So I got a raging hormone going on. Yeah. You're trying to you figure know? it out. Trying to figure it all out. <laughs> I want to yeah. connect. I want right. to connect. Sure. You, you know, yeah. and, and, uh, and I found out that music, it didn't matter if I had an accent or if my vocabulary was minimal. If I knew, if I knew how to play a Beatles song, I'm in. Right. I'm accepted. Yeah. I'm wanted. And, and people are always looking for a good bass player. It doesn't matter what your language is. Well, I, actually, I, I wasn't really playing bass yet. I was playing ah, okay. guitar. Yeah, ah. I was playing guitar. But, you know, just all of us. We, yeah. we went from, like, not playing music to all of a sudden, you know, going to your local store and getting, you know, a, a cheap guitar. And, right. And that's halfway to me, yeah. to being a musician. Now you're gonna learn how to play this thing, you know. You yeah. figure that's it a, out. That's somehow. a journey. A journey many of us have made. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know, and uh, it's it's. I found that music music helped me connect. Okay, I'm connecting now. And you know, it's it's always been about that. And. I, it's because I want to connect. It's, it's, it's not because I want to be looked at, uh, put up on a pedestal or whatever. And no, it's about connection. It's right. about, you know, you're in a band because you want to connect with the guys in the band. And yeah. then the guys in the band, you connect with their families and you connect with the, the little fan base that comes over to see us at the Starwood. And right. then that keeps growing and growing, yep. you know, but it's all about connection. Yeah, connection and, and communication yeah. and all that, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Because we all have things that we can learn from each other yeah that's think, why you that's why youtube is so popular yep because people are teaching i go to youtube to learn so much because i want to i want to learn from people i want to see what their all the points of views and ideas are yeah I, it's funny because we were, i was just in an interview with our friend richie uh uh from uh, blue oyster cult and oh, uh yeah. yeah and he's a good guy i love richie yeah he's a great guy i love Richie. Uh, yeah and uh he was talking about he had a chat with you when you first came on to blue oyster cult which was one mm. of your many gigs and uh, you said to him that he needs to be on youtube and you guys were talking about mm. tech stuff and everything and oh he, yeah he, he goes that changed my life i mean that's and that mm. really has because he's super yeah. successful on youtube yes yes he is oh no he's a he's a tremendous uh talent i mean he's so talented in so many different it'll put it this way and whatever he sets his mind to do or yeah or it enjoys doing right. he will he will excel yeah he has this um people should check that out actually um richie salentano he's on social media but also he has a series uh, called band geek on youtube that mm -hmm. i think now they have seventy thousand subscribers it's like yeah and that's awesome um yeah. but you know talking about the connection thing too i think that what a lot of musicians what I found over the years, a lot of guys um, sometimes will miss is the fact that the interpersonal connections are where you actually often get gigs. It's not just about being a great player. It's about meeting the people along the way, being a nice mm -hmm. person, right? And that's sort of been a big part of your career, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, trust, trust. The reason why, and I, I've always put an emphasis on being trustworthy, even, even when I was a child, you know, it was, Maybe it may. I, I have great role, great roles. I have with with my parents. My 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 dad is gone. Yeah. Um, to be with the Lord, but my my mom's still with us. Great. And and trust. I mean, there was a lot of trust in their in the family unit. Right. You know, it was kind of like 
put it this way, when my family decided to leave Cuba for the unknown, which was, you know, the United States, Miami, you know, and then we kept right. moving around New Jersey and back to Miami, you know, you have to put some trust in, in your parents. Yeah. And, and what kind of decision is this? And so they want, and they, want your, like, they want your future to be bright and yes, opportunities. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I put all my complete trust in them. I never questioned them. Why are, why are we leaving Cuba, blah, 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 you know, anything like that. It, it, plus, I, I knew there was something wrong going on because there was yeah. a lot of things going on in school. Uh, the teachers were keeping me and my brother after school and interrogate us, basically, in a oh. nice way. You right. know about about how my parents felt about the revolution and so on. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. So I mean, so I, you know, I I grew up really quickly. Have you been back to Cuba since you left? No. Wow. No. One of the things that um, back in the '60s, I don't know if it's the same thing now because there seems to be some changes. But when my family left Cuba, we had our citizenship null nullified. Right. So I was stateless. Oh. I was not I was not a Cuban citizen, and of course, I was not a U.S. citizen yet. Right. As a matter of fact, when I toured with Ozzy in 1981, I left the country with a re-entry permit. Interesting. Yeah. I don't even think that those things exist anymore, especially after 9/11. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know? It's not, uh, not so easy to tour these days. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I was a resident. I had a green card and all right. of that, but I was not a citizen yet, so I didn't ha I didn't have a a uh, passport, right? A valid yeah. passport. I yeah. still have my, my my Cuban passport with me. It's in you know in in a box. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but and uh, but I I lost my Cuban citizenship, and I I will not go back to my country of birth as a tourist. Right. I leave that up to the tourist. Yeah, I get that. I mean that that's you know I just talked to um, Carlos Del Porto, uh, bass player, mm -hmm. and he's lives mm -hmm. now he lives in uh, in Finland. And I mean, he's a pretty legendary um, mm. bass player, Latin, you know, jazz player. And uh, we were talked about that. And he actually had just come back from Cuba for the first time mm. in 30 years. Wow. And uh, I mean, I, that's a country that's a lot of people I think are fascinated with, but I totally get what mm. you're saying. Like mm -hmm. that's, you know, the tough situation. It's, st it's still a, a, a ruthless communist regime. Yeah. It still yeah. is, it has not changed. Yeah. Well, so then, I mean, they have so many, amazing musicians that have come from cuba that are you know well, still amazing, still in cuba it's amazing musicians in miami yeah yeah everywhere really so like cuban cuban musicians in miami yeah yeah, yeah. miami's fun yeah. um so what have, what have you been doing since this whole lockdown situation i mean i know that you're used to being on the road quite a bit you've been playing with the guess who recently right yeah i've been in the band uh, officially now for almost five years now yeah and uh I just, you know, because by choice, I tour on the weekends. Oh, by okay. choice, meaning that after doing this for 40 years, I yeah. want to spend time at home, right. not, not be on a tour bus for, you know, six months at a yeah. time. No, I've done that. Been there, done that. I mean, I've, been, I've done it so heavily that we, with Ozzy, I was on a tour bus from April, April, yeah, of 1981. Then around September, we took October off or most of October off. Then one month off, then we continue with the Diary of a Madman tour because Blizzard and Diary were recorded before Tommy and I joined the band. Right. So when it was time to like release the new record, yep. Diary of a Madman, uh, that record was already done. So we didn't have yeah. to go back in the studio and record that. So it was like tour, month off, and keep touring right because normally you would tour go back record and then yeah right. exactly yeah. and then uh you know one thing it's uh my last shows with ozzy was in 1982 in september yeah i i believe it's september i have to look at the dates yeah that's written okay. down uh recording the ritz uh the ritz the right. speak of the devil right black sabbath re-recordings and uh but at the same that same week, I was recording half of the Metal Health record. Wow! Yeah, the same week, right? One in the studio and the other one live, <laughs> right? Yeah, crazy. And then and then I, I I when I came back from recording "Speak of the Devil" that week, I called Sharon and I told her that I was going to leave the band, 
Mm-hmm. That's September that takes us up to like October, right? So I'm back out again. So I've, I complete the record with Quiet Riot. Then we go into like post-production of like, you know, the uh, designing the, uh, the cover, doing some rehearsals. Right. But we haven't played yet because we were waiting for the release of the album to actually play as Quiet Riot. Sure. Right? So in March, here comes March. And, and from September to March, it's not that much time, you know. I'm back on the road again. <laughs> right yeah and and that i mean i'm sure me, you're, i'm sure you're loving it but at the same time you're just it wears yeah. you out right well i had just met uh during an aussie break the 1981 the year before my uh my girlfriend girlfriend who who later on will become my wife of of uh 36 years now so. wow awesome yeah and so there was like okay you know now i got now I'm not just a single guy. I right. Have, now you, you have know, a reason to come home and I have hang a reason, out. Yeah. Reason to come home, and, and then, um, but she understood. I mean, she she quickly learned, or it's not about learning; it's more like uh, an awareness right. of like the reality of what a musician does, a professional musician. You know? Yeah. And uh, so it's like, okay, we're gonna make this work because it's it's you know every, everything that we do in life is towards the goal of. of of maintaining our relationship, you know, and, yeah. and, and, and vibrating at the same frequency. So we're in harmony. I and totally all that, agree. You know? yep. Yeah. It doesn't, mean, sometimes it's not the same frequency, yeah. but as long as the frequencies are harmonious. Yeah. You're okay. As long as you're on the same yeah. page. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I get you. No dissonance. Yeah. It's and it's hard. Nice. I mean, I mean yeah. the music thing, like it's hard in relationships as we all know. So when yeah. you find that person that's willing to hang in there and work on it with you, that's, just, oh, that's a special. God, she, She's been unbelievable. You know, and she's never gotten in my business. She has never been a person to say, oh, you shouldn't play with this and should play with that one or whatever. Right. No, she always, you know, had faith and trusted me that I was going to make the, uh, the right decisions, you know? Yeah. That's and awesome. uh, yeah, so, and then, and then with Quiet Riot, <laughs> because what happened is uh, with Metal Health, you know, we did uh, the Scorpions tour that led us to the Oz Festival because right. we were not originally booked at the Oz Festival. That uh, was like a last minute addition, you know. I, and I, I love that video. I think it's real fun to watch. And what, I mean, obviously the playing, but that you're also like having, you can tell you're having fun. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, but you know, think it, you, you know, what, what, one thing that really helped us was that we didn't know we were gonna do that gig. So there was uh, never really an anticipation of building up for like months, like, oh my God, yeah. you know, like, like the Scorpions. The reason why we toured with the Scorpions is because we shared the same agent and the Scorpions just needed like two weeks to have, you know, to warm up, do, do a bunch of shows starting in Duluth, Minnesota and ending right. up in Denver. And it was kind of like warming up to that Oz Festival show. Yeah. So, so I, like- I, could see, I could see that they were working on it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah. Because I was. How many people were at the US Festival? I can't remember. It was hundreds uh, of thousands, about, right? Yeah, about 300, 350,000 for that metal day. That's yeah. crazy. And mm. yeah, and, and and so immediately after that, you know, we just jumped on the uh, the ZZ Top tour, and then Lover Boy, right. and then we did some touring on our own. Went back out again with with Iron Maiden, and then by the time we were with Black Sabbath. We that was around November. We uh, reached number one about yeah. about today. <laughs> wow! Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> thirty-eight years ago. You Isn't know, that crazy? I know. Yeah, it doesn't. It's funny because that yeah. seems like, in a way, it seems like it was yesterday, right? Yeah, exactly. And because it's always now. See, I, I agree yeah. with you. I get, I get what you. Yeah, I get you. <laughs> you know, and. Uh, and and then we open up for uh, we went uh, supporting Judas Priest. Then we start the clock again because now we're headlining. Right now the, know, the songs I, I, are hitting. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're headliners on the same re- record, so we're coming back to all these markets as as the headliner now. Wow. With basically the same songs, you know. You know so we had to like pull things out of the out of the choir riot uh dubro actually dubro catalog you know? right yeah and uh so now and, and then they pull us off off the road like around march stick us in the studio really quick to come up with a new record so it can be released in in the on the third quarter of the year and which take us to you know starting touring 
in yeah. August. Yeah, because people, people don't realize like there's a lot of planning that goes into all that. The oh, record God, release, yeah. the tour. Mm -hmm. I mean that that's actually all very, very coordinated. Yeah, um, very coordinated, and also airplay because you have right. to like bring your record to the radio station. This is like in the old days, forty years ago, yeah. fifty years, you know. And and then you you know then the the the, the promotion guy has to work with all of these because we were signed to Pasha, but also Pasha was distributed through Epic. Right. You know, so it was like now you not only you know there's you a lot of pieces releases, to that puzzle. A yeah. lot of yes, yeah, a lot of competition. I mean, there's only you know the only so many minutes, hours that a radio station is gonna play songs. It's top forty. Right. Top forty. Yeah. Limited to forty songs. Right. Because that that album, I mean, the Metal Health album, actually crossed over pretty big time, right? It actually oh, got yeah. into pop, and I mean, that's why it mm. ended up going so huge. Yeah, uh, as a matter of fact, I, I have a gold single for Come and Feel the Noise, which means we sold a million singles because wow. gold is a million as a single and then gold as an LP is 50, uh, it's half a million. Right. It's yeah. platinum is a million. Yeah, right. that's, that's how they do it. Yeah. Um, tell me about, and I know it happened actually wasn't that long ago, but tell me about Frankie. And I mean, you guys remained close pretty much since you first met him, right, for all those years. Oh yeah, no, no. We started playing in, uh, immediately after we met uh, uh, forty-eight years ago. Yeah, and, and yeah. what was he? I mean, he was doing a bunch of different things up until he passed, right? Was he still? He was still out touring and and recording and. Yeah, it was incredibly valiant, you know. Just he was he, so heroic of him how he battled and did not let cancer beat him. You know, yeah. uh, his uh, his wife Regina uh, made it possible for me to be with him the last two days. Mm. Uh, I went over to his house the Wednesday before he uh, he passed away. Uh, yeah. We live like 10, 15 minutes away from each other over oh, here. Oh, good. And you guys, and, pretty, uh, I mean, you're pretty much family, right? At that oh, point. yeah, we are family. Yeah, we're family. Years, we're yeah. family. I mean, even though we were not playing together, I mean, you know, <laughs> playing yeah. together, you're just playing together. You know, right. it's, uh, it's, 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 there's something the, deeper, deeper beyond that, right? Yeah. Yeah. The family bond that, that you create, you know, that, that really matters, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so I spent some time with him that Wednesday night and uh, late, late afternoon. And then uh, the following day, actually that night he was rushed to the hospital because he, he was having seizures. So it was, it was kind of yeah. hard for him to be able to talk on the phone or even sure. FaceTime or whatever. And uh, so that, that day, uh, the day he passed away on Thursday, uh, I was actually, yeah, uh, Regina arranged for me to be able to go into the hospital, oh, wow. and, which is during the COVID, it's, it's virtually impossible, but right. somehow she, she, she made it possible. And uh, I'll be eternally grateful, you know, to her for yeah. allowing me to, uh, to say goodbye to Frankie. Yeah. You know? And I'm sure that, I'm sure that meant a lot to him and her, I would imagine, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I gotta tell you, he was a fighter. <laughs> he was a fighter. He was, uh, they took him off life support like around noon and the doctor you know and gave him the the final drip yeah you know the final bag you know? right i got you and the doctor said you know he's uh he's, he's probably he'll probably be gone in, in a couple hours i left by 4 30 and i gotta tell you he was fighting us he would not let go yeah uh his, his hands were warmer than mine Wow, this is how alive he was, you know. Yeah. And then uh, I got a, uh, a message from Regina that um, around around nine thirty, ten o'clock, he um, he uh, he had passed away. Yeah, um, yeah. He, I mean, the thing about Frankie is that he touched a lot of lives, and I know you guys mm -hmm. are soul brothers beyond just this life. Mm -hmm. So he's always going to be with you, I'm sure. But mm -hmm. I'm sure you feel that. Um, I'm sure in some ways too with Randy it was similar even though randy's thing was a little bit more sudden but um yeah they're all different experiences because you know randy was so sudden and unexpected right uh frankie had told me about his condition having uh, pancreatic cancer stage four right uh about a year and a half before he passed away 
Mm-hmm. And he asked me not to tell anybody. So yeah. nobody knew. Nobody knew. And and it was, you know, I, I went through a similar thing with, with, with Ronnie James Dio. Right. Where, you know, you hear about, oh, you know, he's doing better and the chemo is really working and he yeah. might go into remission. So you get these hopes and it's all these ups and downs. Yeah. And these guys are all, they're all, they're all like brothers to you, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Brothers, mentors, heroes. Yeah. Yeah. Ronnie was, I mean, I met Ronnie many years ago at Sound City and uh, he just had such a fun energy and I'm such a big guy, a big guy in a small package. (laughs) Incredible human being. What, what, what a ball of energy and spirit and frequency that he vibrated with, you know. So you feel, I mean, I'm sure you feel like these guys are all still with you, you think, and, and oh, around I mean, your spirits. You know, yeah. We we are spirit, you know, yeah. uh, we're energy. And and to me, the beauty of it is that once we pass, we kind of like meld back into. Yeah, the consciousness. <laughs> into, yeah. You know, into the into universe, the universe right. you know. Yeah, I think, I think we feel, I think we feel the same about that, that we're all connected. I mean, that, that's the thing for me, like. What I found in my life is that you meet people along the way and you don't know at the, at the moment why you met them, but there's always a reason and oh, yeah. you find out later. Right. Yeah. And yeah, all those absolutely. guys. Yeah. And all those guys mm-hmm. are, I mean, they're, they're legendary musicians, but they're also legendary people. Uh, yeah. Which is more important in a way. I, right? I've met a lot of great musicians that. <laughs> yeah. That we're not. <laughs> I know. I got you. <laughs> it's just like, let me put it this way. The, way. the way that I like to look at it is they're still on their journey. Right. Yeah, and we're all at different places, and we don't. And They're different places. That's yeah. It. yeah, our journey yeah. is not somebody else's. I think that's a, that's a good life lesson. Mm-hmm. I've, I've learned. I've learned along the way. Mm-hmm. Um, so what's what's the future for you? What, what do you see happening after we get through all oh. this? Oh, I, I'm having so much fun in the now that I, I mean, I, I work on things that I know some some way somehow they will have some kind of a ripple effect into the future. Sure. But I like to create the, the big wave mm-hmm. here because somehow, no matter how big the wave is, by the time it hits the shore, it's not going to have the same impact. Right. And sometimes it's hard to know, <laughs> right? You start different things and you th- you hope it works, but you don't know, but you still have oh, to yeah. put the energy, right? You don't know. You know, it's, it's I read books. I, I, I watch tutorials, you know, about philosophers and, and, on YouTube and so on, you know, because I, I want to hear points of view. Yeah, you like to learn, and right? I like to learn. I like to like, hmm, let me yeah. think, of, maybe I can, yeah, let me look at it from this angle because, right. you know, there's more than 360 degrees. Yeah, yeah. There, there's more than that. And there's so much, yeah, there's so much we don't even see in the world. Yeah. That, yeah. Well, it's in a, if we're looking at it in a three-dimensional, and now they're talking about the fourth and the fifth dimension, you know. Right. And, and so you might look at something like this as a 360, right? Well, if you look at like this, there's a 360 that you really don't see because you're right. only seeing the, uh, the, the radios yeah. of it. And, and what we're know? able to, and what we're able to perceive, right? Exactly. As humans. Yeah. So, uh, you know, so there's so many ways to look at things, but I like to look at them to see how much light they mm. have in them. I think, I mean, I'm sure you've learned along the way too. It's important to keep learning, right? To never close oh, off. As soon as you think you know everything, that's when you stop learning, which is. Well, that's when you die. Exactly. Well, because you stop growing. Yeah. Every, yeah. Everything that stops growing withers away. Yeah. You, know? um, you also, I know you have, you've done a lot of stuff with the video product projects, the if, uh, mm-hmm. video animation projects. Are you still doing that or? Yeah, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that there's a reason why you certain things happen because, you know, because later on you find out why. Right, you know? exactly, yeah. And and I, I, I got heavily into animation because I was beginning to lose, you know, my, 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 my vision. Nothing, I wasn't going blind. I was right. just going like, okay. And it, 
it, it allowed me to be creative with a laptop in front of me. I put my glasses and I created animation. Mm -hmm. And I had lost a bit of the joy of playing because I yeah. really couldn't see clearly what I was playing anymore. Right. And it's nice because, to have something other than just music, right? Well, yes and no. Yeah. Well, <laughs> actually, actually I should say that for myself. <laughs> <laughs> because you, because you well, can get burned out if you only do one thing all the time. Uh, I guess I mean. It's all connected. It's yeah. all connected. It's uh, sometimes my wife is talking to me and, and 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 she thinks that I'm not paying attention. No, I, no, it's just that I'm lost. Right, you're it, doing it, a bunch of different things. Yeah. In my head, I'm working some. I'm listening to to a, a a part of a song that I'm working on that I need to fix. You know that I need to like. Okay, this is not. I don't like this. I don't like that last right, chord, right. the way that the note. And, and that's where I'm at because yeah. I'm always listening to the music in my head. I do not get to play the music in my head in public. Right. Because I will make a living out of the music in my head. Oh, ah, okay. See, that's, that's, but, that's, a, that's an intriguing thing that we'll have to talk about again. <laughs> yeah, but, but give, given the opportunity to create the music in my head, that's what I focus on. Right. You know, because that... All of us, we have this unique contribution to music yeah. in our heads. We have our own voice, right? We have our own voice. We have our own song, mm -hmm. you know, that, yep. that lingers until you have to get it, it out. Drifts, <laughs> it, it drifts off to somebody else's. It's like tuning into a radio station. Right. Yeah. You know, that's, you know, that's interesting too, because in terms of songwriting and that kind of thing, like some of the best songs ever written took 10 minutes to write. Yeah. Because they, they, that person tuned into that frequency and they tune nailed in. it. Yep. You, you got to tune in. You got to, I, it's like yesterday, if that, if the Paul McCartney would have not written that, somebody else would have, would have, would have come up with it. Tune yeah. into that. Right. Because you're not creating, you're discovering. Yeah. Music. I like that. I you're like that. Yep. You're discovering a sequence of notes at a certain tempo. Right. With with certain words attached to it or emotions, right? Mm -hmm. And when you when you write a song, that's what you're doing. You're just peeling back, it's you're exploring and then you discover something. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, that then I think that that's a really good perspective because mm -hmm. again, like people, kids have a, a view of guys that want to write songs. They have a certain percep perception of it, but it's not always the right perception because like you said, that those things are yeah. out there and the, they're out there in the ether. And our job is to communicate, to pay attention often. <laughs> yeah. Because a lot of times those moments go by and we just don't pay attention to that, right? Yeah. And also, you know, the, the more you, you, the more educated you are about a subject, you know, just like, let's say, if you're going to educate yourself about medicine, be a doctor, right. sure, right? You'll find out that we, we human beings, we have a pattern, right? We have a head, we have arms and we got legs and organs. There's right. a pattern to it. Yeah, the so, common the common denominator. Yeah. Yeah. So if you learn how to cure one person, let's say some somebody has a uh, their kidneys, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you know about kidneys. Yeah. You work right. on somebody else. Oh, you okay? The kidneys. I yeah. know this. Okay. Music is the same thing. Mm -hmm. Music has its own patterns, its own but patterns. See, one thing that you not create with medicine, or unless you're creating a cure, is to actually create. Right. You create, you know, you cannot, re uh, okay. you pull, some, pull you, something out of the ether. That's right. Yeah. That, or discover, discover right. something, yeah. you know, and like, like we were mentioning about. And, but there's some rules as to what you actually discover within the realms of what you were, you're trying to place that music, if it's correct or not, or right. is it going at the same frequency? Yeah. And Just, if it's, if, you know, how, and figuring out sort of the, the language of it, right? How to the, communicate. Yeah. The harmonic qualities right. of it. It's in harmony with this. And that's how you get hit songs. Yeah. And you can learn all the rules, but you got to, at some point, you got to forget them <laughs> and pay attention, well, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, again, about connecting 12 notes yep. that actually connect with each other if you go in perfect fifths or perfect fourths and right. you start the clock all over again. It is not. It is not a coincidence that there are 12 notes in our system because there's other right. musical systems. Yeah. But in the system that, that Pythagoras right. figured out, which actually learned from the Sumerians, you know, 
this has all been thought out thousands of years ago. Right. You know, that you have the 12 notes that correlate. Originally, it was with us astronomy. Ah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. All these, the the zodiac signs. Okay, right. the Sumerians. Sumerians figured that out. Yeah. But then and again, isn't it know, interesting that way back then they were onto this? They they knew. Oh, somehow yeah. Somehow they knew. Yeah. Well, look at us. Where where, where are we in the uh, in the Christian calendar? We're two thousand. Two, you know, twenty twenty. All right. Okay. Those guys went back way. <laughs> okay. This is going to be stuff that they're going to look at us a thousand years from now, if we're still around. Right. And they're going to say, wow, these guys, look at them. They had a phone that you could actually, instead of calling people, you, you can look at each other. Right. And they're going to go, wow, we can do that with, with our minds. Right. Yeah. Or with a chip that they have in them or whatever, or genetically, we have been developed to become a human being that already is born with an iPhone or, right. or hologram inside of us. Yeah, you know, no, whatever, I get you. you know, yeah, you know. yeah so, it's all, it's, it's, I always say like, to me, like we're infants in the universe. We think we're so smart <laughs> and we're like these little babies. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, I think, they, we, think, we, we think we're geniuses and there's so much more yeah. out there that we don't even, we don't even know no. about. Um, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so your future looks a lot like right now you're actually just sort of coming up with your ideas what you're germinating in your mind and, and stuff that you want to work on coming up um and no, so the animation the animation i'm sorry go ahead. no no not really I'm, I'm 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 working on projects yeah right now and one of them is an animation project okay that's all i wanted to get back to so yeah but but it but my contribution is completely uh, more music related than okay. animation. I'm not oh, okay. part of the animation team, right. but since I am trained in animation, I understand the process. Yeah, so that's able, a huge, I'm, huge help. Yeah, so I'm able to talk to to the animators one on one. Right. You know, and I know the, they know what you you're, you're on their page. Yeah. I because I understand what where the technology allows and where the room to improve the technology is all about. And, yeah. and we are using a brand new, incredible technology. Yeah. To and, that, and that stuff's always changing, right? Just like the music recording, all that stuff. It's, it's almost weekly. It's changing <laughs> the tech. Yeah. The, uh, the tech evolves, evolves, uh, it progresses, but it's still the, the, the final product remains the same. It's a right. story. Yeah, you have to tell a story. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, for example, we're telling stories, which yeah. hopefully we will engage the the viewer or the listener. Right. Uh, it's all the same. It doesn't yeah. matter whether we're doing with you know through Wi-Fi or we're sitting there around the campfire. Yeah, it's communication, it. right? Communication, connecting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's fun. I mean, like I, I think that's awesome. That also too that you like to learn and that you kept you keep growing. And I think that that's a good lesson for everybody. Yeah, it's I. Uh, music has always been a great vehicle for me to connect with my Creator, with God. You know, as much as religion has been and spirituality and so on. And I just, I have this 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 need. This need, this this fire, consuming need to get closer to God. Right. You know. Um, I think that that's not, great. That that's great that you have that in your life. Like it, it's a nice, a great anchor, right? right? For all of us to have. You have course, to have something. Yeah. 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 It's 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 what keeps me. So what keeps me moving? I mean, I, I I and and this has been something that I felt even at my lowest points in my career i mean having a an epiphany having experiences you know spiritual awakening right having that anchor at, yeah yeah uh, i don't even think of it as an anchor because the anchor would tie me down would not right. allow me to to move but mm -hmm. it's more like a like a platform okay. a rock to right. you know to to move around yeah you know and and I, you know, talking about, you know, we're using metaphors now, you know, and the way, one of the things that, the ways that I look at life is that we're all, we're all boxed in somehow, right. you know, we're incubated in a box when we're mm -hmm. born. 
Yep. And then we're taking out of this, we come out of this box and they put us in a crib, which is yeah. another, another box. And then we they put us in a room, which is another box. And, and then we go to school, which is a room. Yeah. It's another box. And so, you know, we spend our lives in boxes and then we die and they stick us in another box. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. And so, I mean, and we spend our lives building our own boxes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, yeah. Know, yeah. you know, and, and, and it's like, well, if, yeah, it's so my, my goal in life is to take that box and move the walls and the ceiling of the box right. as far as I can until I don't even see the yeah. walls or the ceiling. I'm going to need a floor to stand on. Right. Yeah. And, you're, you, know, and you got, and you got your wife there too, supporting you. And yeah, absolutely. And that makes, that makes a huge difference. I know I've had, I've had that, that same thing with me yeah. and that when life gets crazy and you're trying to expand and, and move in different directions, it's nice to have that yeah. with you, your partner yeah. and your faith and your belief that that's something yeah. to stand on. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something to stand on. Yeah. And I need a floor. I need a real, solid foundation for that yeah. and uh, and that's my relationship with god you know and you know it's and i laugh because you know so i especially in social media you know it's sometimes i make typos when i when i write god god bless you as a you right. know, yeah. it's, it's salutation on a on an email and the algorithm will not correct the word God. Hmm. When I, let's say because the O is next to the I. Right. They say, so yeah. it comes out Jid. Okay, <laughs> okay, that's good. Jid is good. Yeah, God you is know. not. Yeah, God is not according <laughs> to the algorithm. You know? Right. I got so you. It's like, no, I gotta fix this, you know. So <laughs> we're we're in a, in a in a at a time where technology is really or whoever is behind creating technology and the algorithms, right. they uh, God is a bad word. Yeah, no, I got you. That is, it's a four letter word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got you. You know, and it's like, yeah, it's, it's, like, it's sad, you know, because, because it doesn't, everybody needs their own thing. They need to, they need to have what they have and what they believe. Yeah. And it's not for somebody else to, to change that or, or yeah. impose their, yeah, I got you. And it's and uh, the way, yeah. And, and, and the way, you know, I, I, I just want to like, you know, yeah, give you uh, the, this, uh, take your word to where I was going, you know. Yeah, go ahead. And uh, the way that I look at it is like, yeah, it's, it, you know, what, what's, what's really happening is that is for a lot of people, they find it very hard to connect with the idea of God being something depicted on a re Renaissance painting. Right, exactly. You yeah. know, if God is, God, you know, is like this being with a beard and, you know, doing all this, and, <laughs> yeah, you right. know, whatever. Shining you lights, know, yeah. And, and I can see that. Yeah, of course, you know, somebody's going to have a hard time with that. Just like I, I did as a Catholic walking into my grandmother's house and she's got open the door and there is Jesus on the cross bleeding. Right, and, yeah. You know, and yeah, suffering like, what, what is this? <laughs> and I'm a kid, life size. You right, know? yeah, and, yeah. And I'm a kid. And I'm going like, wow, this is, this is, this is scary. And it's then, freaking me out. <laughs> freaking me out, you know. And, 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 but it's supposed to freak you out, you know. Yeah, because, right. You know, yeah. it's like, no, no, this is, no, no. I, I, I could never, there was always like a disconnect with that. Sure. You know, with yeah. that thought. And then, uh, and then, you know, telling me, oh, God is dead. This is like, you know, on Good Friday, which is the day of the crucifixion. I don't know why they call it good. Yeah, right, exactly. It, 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 all this I have exactly and, the same feelings. You know, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, confused. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. And then God is dead, you know. And yeah. I'm like, how, how, how is this possible? <laughs> you know, it's God, you know. And, and also, you know, the confusion of, of Jesus being God and, right, and right, it's right. not, you yeah. know, it's the son of God. It's like, right. well, there's, there's so much confusion going no, on. I get you. And I say, okay, I get that. I get that. But can, can we go back to like, there is a creator and yes, we have not seen, there's, there's no selfies. Yeah, right. that's, that's, that's one great thing about, about Christ coming, you know, to be with us, among us 2000 years ago. Right. Yeah. No cell phones. No cell phone. No, no TikTok. Like, but yeah, exactly. You know, because it's supposed to be about faith and right. trust. Yeah. This is how you build your spirituality and, and faith. Without, yeah, but nowadays everybody's like, okay, prove it. 
do you have a photo of that or it doesn't exist you know yeah. like what's your faith right. <laughs> what's wrong with you yeah yeah, yeah. so well that's yeah. you know that's actually a great discussion and i think it's important for everybody you know no matter who you are as a musician as a person as a human you have to believe in something you have to have a reason to, to be a good person and to you know move beyond just just this <laughs> just what we experience every day right yeah it's it, it, it could be very simple as saying it's all in black and white or good and bad right. or left and right or yeah. resonance you know opposite polarities sure. things like that but there's so many variables of each yeah you yeah know, and again like, like there's so much there's so much that there's so much mystery still which is good in a way yeah yeah. yeah, but but it's all connected. You know that heat and cold is connected by temperature. Right. They're both temperature. Yeah. One they, is they high, have a one common is they have a common denominator. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, it's it's it everything, everything is connected. Yeah. You know. Um, how can people I know one thing I really like about you and that actually one of the reasons why we've you're are you even doing this is that you actually um on your pages is, and you actually personally interact with people. Um What's the best way if people want to find you online? I mean, obviously we know all the press stuff and all that, but what's if people actually want to reach out to you, what's the best way? Well, the best way actually or to reach out to me, but to actually learn about me is yeah. the, uh, I have a radio show on Monsters of Rock Radio. Right. Uh, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, and then on Tuesday, and we have just uh, the network, Dash Network, who that's where Monsters of Rock Radio is part of, just sure. partner with Spotify. So awesome. we're slowly uploading the uh, our 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 show, which is Six Degrees of Sarzo, over okay. to Spotify right. and make it uh, available for uh, for on demand streaming. Mm -hmm. And that is the best way because I started doing the show originally as a podcast. Right, it was called The Dash, and it was basically to document the story and the lives of, uh, you know, people that I have access to, you know, friends of mine, uh, colleagues and neighbors right. who happen to be uh, very successful in the yeah. industry and so on. Because I started going to memorials such as the uh, Ronnie James Dio and Lemmy's memorial and people right. get up there to say all these nice things about him. And I'm thinking, would it be nice if the person was here to actually hear those nice things you know yeah. so i start i started the, a podcast called the dash which is actually still available you can go online and actually listen to it right and those were like my 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 first uh conversations that i had okay and then i got a call from uh, from the ceo of monsters of rock which you know has the cruise monsters of rock cruises right. the, yep. the radio station yeah they so built on. a really awesome thing yeah yeah and i actually got to play the monsters of rock uh festivals Awesome. Back in the um, yeah, 80s yeah. and uh, 90, uh, 1990 with, uh, with Weissnake and invited me to come on the station. Now, the, uh, the difference between a radio show and, and the podcast is like, for example, this is being a podcast, it's linear. Right. With the, with the radio station, since it's uh, a music centric, I, there's a, I do segments. Okay. So I'll, I'll talk for about 10, 15 minutes. Then we uh, add music that right. is related to the conversation. Then we yeah. come back for another 10, 15, 15 minutes. And so it's two segments per hour, four hour show. So it's oh, a little okay. bit different, different. So format. yeah, so you get to showcase the information, but also the music so they can hear both. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that that's true. Like you said, like people like they always when people pass, they talk about the legend and, and what the person, the personality, but you should celebrate them too when they're alive. Right. And they're still their oh. legacy. I mean, those guys, Lemmy and all those guys have such a big legacy that's going to go on. Well, no, yeah. And that and in addition to the fact that you're going to get to hear from the actual person in their own words. Right. The way it was, how it happened and why. Yeah. Which is important because there's a lot of there's a lot a lot of those guys. I mean, even yourself, you know, there's so much information out there, but you want to get the right information. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of misinformation. Right, yeah. and you want to get exactly. the essence of who they actually are as a person. Right, and and to be honest with you, no matter how many times you try to correct somebody on 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 social media, there will always be somebody else 
who did not get the memo. <laughs> right, I know. Yeah, yeah. What can you What can you do? Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you also um, you also have your uh, Instagram page. Do you you have a website? I you know websites are, are not very interactive. Right. I have the same exact feeling about that. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> you still got to get people to the website. <laughs> what for? Yeah, exactly. I ra- you know, I rather post Instagram and, and, yeah. and post uh, whatever. And, and then I got the radio show. I mean, how much more? Yeah, it's too much. I, so I, do? <laughs> you know, I, I got believe Facebook. Me. Believe me, I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's great. So yeah, yeah so people uh, they can find you. I know you're really active on your Instagram, and it's and it's fun. Yeah. It's also fun photos yeah. and, and stuff yeah. information. Do you think Bach would have would have <laughs> written as many pieces of music if he had to be exactly social media? <laughs> I know. Yeah. Plus, you want to keep your when you're in that stream of consciousness of writing and all that, you don't oh, want to yeah. be broken up by exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for uh, for joining me, Rudy. I really appreciate it. Um, I've always, as I mentioned at the top, I've been a huge fan of you, of yours. And I mean, I know millions of millions of people are, and you've inspired many players, including myself. So I really am very thankful that you took the time to do this with me. Such a pleasure, Daryl. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And um, I'll include everybody that's uh, watching this. We'll include all of Rudy's information um, on the podcast episode, including his link to his Instagram and and the the other projects that he's doing. And uh, thanks so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye.